Hello, this is Alistair McGrath again. And in this series of short presentations, we're going to engage with three readings taken from my widely used theological textbook, The Christian Theology Reader. This is now in its fourth edition. And you can follow the text from the reader itself, but the text will be displayed on screen as necessary to allow you to follow the discussion as conveniently as possible. Our first text is taken from the writings of Irenaeus of Lyon, a second century Christian writer who was born in the port city of Smyrna in Asia Minor, now known as Izmir in modern day Turkey. Irenaeus was brought up in a Christian family and eventually ended up as bishop of the city of Lyon, a major Roman colonial centre in the south of modern day France. The Romans, of course, referred to this region as Gaul. You can visit the Roman ruins today and get a sense of what the old city must have looked like. This first reading explores the idea of tradition. The importance of the idea of tradition first became obvious in the Gnostic controversy of the second century. Christian writers found themselves having to deal with some highly unusual and rather creative interpretations of the Bible. So how are they to deal with these? If the Bible was to be regarded as authoritative, did that mean that every interpretation of the Bible was to be regarded as being of equal value? The word tradition it comes from the Latin term traditio, which means handing over or handing down or even handing on. And we find this process described in the New Testament itself. At one point, Paul reminds his readers that he was handing on to them some core teachings of the Christian faith, which he himself had received from other people. And the term tradition can refer to both the action of passing teachings on from one generation to another, but also to the body of teachings that are passed on in this way. So the word tradition actually refers to both a process and a body of teaching. The idea of tradition is already present in the New Testament, and it's especially important in three later New Testament letters, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. These are especially concerned with questions of church structure and the passing on of Christian teaching. These three letters are sometimes known as the pastoral epistles, and they stress the importance of safeguarding the faith that was entrusted to the churches and on passing this faith on to future generations. New Testament also, of course, uses the notion of tradition in a rather more negative sense, meaning something like human ideas and practices which are not divinely authorized. For example, the Gospels report that Jesus of Nazareth was openly critical of certain traditions within first century Palestinian Judaism, which he regarded as being unhelpful human inventions. The author of our first readings, Irenaeus, is best known for his criticisms of Gnosticism, especially in his writing Against All Heresies. Although Gnosticism is a broad movement with a wide range of ideas, most Gnostics believed in some kind of secret knowledge of God, or a secret key to interpreting the New Testament. The Greek word gnosis, from which Gnosticism takes its name, basically means knowledge and the Gnostics saw themselves having privileged access to certain secret knowledge. They belonged to an elite which knew certain secret truths. Sometimes this knowledge was understood in terms of some kind of secret password, which would allow souls to get admission to heaven after death. Sometimes it was understood as a special way of reading the Gospels, which unlocked their secret meanings. Irenaeus protested against this idea of a secret knowledge. He argued that the right way of interpreting the New Testament had been passed on by the apostles, the same apostles who wrote it in the first place. The Gnostics, he suggested, interpreted the Bible according to their own taste. Whereas in contrast, orthodox believers interpreted the Bible in line with the intentions of their authors, namely the apostles. What was handed down from the apostles through the church was thus not merely the biblical texts themselves, but a certain way of reading and understanding those texts. So let's turn and look at the first reading and see what Irenaeus has to say. The reading takes the form of an extract from his best-known writing, Against All Heresies, in which he deals with the question of tradition. 
so please turn to it now. It's reading 2-2 on page 69 of the Christian Theology Reader. And I'd like you to read it through and pause this presentation while you do that. And when you're ready to go, press play again. So I'll see you again in a very short time. Irenaeus begins by noting that biblical books can be interpreted in a number of ways. And this clearly raises the question of which is the right way, which is the meaning that the apostles intended. Irenaeus argues that the tradition of the church represents an important way of finding the true meaning of the New Testament texts. Let's look at a quote. The scriptures contain a variety of statements, and it's not possible for those who do not know the tradition to find the truth in them. Irenaeus notes that some of these Gnostic writers appeal to what they call a living voice as a way of interpreting these texts. He regards this as purely subjective and contrasts it with the tradition which is from the apostles, safeguarded in the churches by successions of presbyters. This is not about some subjective matter. This is about an objective truth passed down by the church. And his point here is that the churches do not rely on the subjective impressions of maverick theologians, but on a long-standing way of interpreting biblical texts, which have been passed down within the church from one generation to another. The church possesses two theological resources, both of which are handed down by the apostles, the New Testament itself and the framework by which these texts are to be interpreted. In other words, the church hands down both texts and their authorial intentions. Irenaeus emphasizes that this tradition is public, not something secret. The apostolic tradition, Irenaeus declares, has been made known in every church in the entire world. It's open to inspection, publicly, unlike the privatized living voice on which Gnosticism relies the foundation of its biblical interpretation. And Irenaeus insists that the integrity and reliability of this public tradition can be justified. The churches can demonstrate historical continuity with the apostles, so that their teachings were passed down faithfully. Listen to what he says. We are able to number those who are bishops appointed by the apostles and their successors in the church to the present day. And the point that Irenaeus is making is that if the apostles had known secret mysteries in the first place, they would have passed them down to those whom they entrusted the churches. Let's look at the concluding section of the reading. Let me read to you what Irenaeus has to say. The apostles have, as it were, deposited this truth in all its fullness in this depository, so that whoever wants to may draw from this water of life. The first point to note here is that the suggestion is that the church is a depository. In other words, a safe place in which the truths of the Christian faith are safeguarded and passed down from one generation to another. And notice the emphasis on fullness. Nothing has been left out. All that needs to be known for salvation has been passed on. There's no need for secret knowledge that supplements the teaching of the church. Whatever needs to be known has been made publicly available through the preaching of the church. Well, I hope that you found this extended reflection on that reading helpful. There's a lot more that needs to be said, but hopefully I've given you enough to allow you to make sense of the issues that Irenaeus regarded as important. And as you can imagine, they remain important today. In our next presentation, we're going to look at a third century writer, Cyprian of Carthage, and reflect on his views on heaven. I look forward to joining you again very soon. Thank you for listening.